yet spend a day with the average working girl. Maisie is due at the office at 8.30. She has the alarm set for 8.25. That gives her exactly five minutes to take a shower, get dressed, fix her hair, have her breakfast, take a bus, and arrive at the office. Let's get back to Maisie and see what happens. There's the bell, and there goes Maisie. It's a fast break, and Maisie leads a peel around the far turn. She reaches the bathroom and overtakes the shower by two lengths. It's Maisie by one as she passes the clubhouse turn. In a steady drive, saves ground and brushes her teeth. Heading down the back stretch, staying close to the rail, Maisie slips into a slip, and now she heads down the back stretch of her neck and ties her hair into a careful knot. She shows great form and grace as she steadily keeps her pace. A dab of this and a dab of that, a dash of this and a dash of that. And Maisie looks like, well, there she goes in a steady drive. And now she's back, still keeping her pace with indigestion. She drives on with donuts and coffee. The bus takes the lead. It's pulling away and Maisie falls back by six lengths as she passes the three-quarter pole. As the bus comes thundering down the back stretch, Maisie goes to the whip. It's Maisie by two, it's Maisie by one, by a neck, a nose, and she makes it. And now Maisie takes the lead again. Heading down the home stretch, she steadily increases her stride as she enters the elevator. Six, 12, 17 lengths in the lead, and now she's losing ground. Keep going, Maisie, don't give up. It's going to be a driving finish. It's one minute to 8.30, and here comes Maisie. Well, that was a close finish. And now Maisie is getting ready for a hard day's work. As Maisie toils away, the hours pass very slowly. It's now 12 o'clock. And Maisie stops at the corner drugstore to have her lunch. After lunch, we see Maisie back at the office, continuing her daily struggle until 5.30. It's 5.30, Maisie. And now the scene changes to a millinery shop on Fifth Avenue. Here we find Maisie trying on some new hats. How about this one? No, 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 that won't do. Mm -mm, too big. Chapeau a la mode? Something from Paris, very becoming. The peekaboo model. You don't care for it? The droopy ear model. Princess Eugenie's convertible snood. How about a night in Venice? Moonlight Sonata. Sea Biscuit model. The Venetian Garden. Right turn model. Or perhaps a left turn. Sports model. This one, or this? Here's one. The Snug Chin by Oliver. Perhaps this, very becoming. No? Care for this? How about the jackpot? How about that one? Oh, that one is made to order. Hat designing department? Call for model 36. Call for model 36. Call for model 36. We now visit the hat designing department. Here we see the women's hat designers comfortably working in their padded cells. Job for you, Chester. Mm. Upset Daisy. Oh, uh, I'm gonna make a hat. I'm gonna make a hat. It's wonderful. It's marvelous. Beautiful. Oh, 
promenading on the boulevard, proudly wearing her new bonnet. Hats, hats, hats. Hats to the right of us, hats to the left of us. Let's pause a moment and pay tribute to those unsung heroes, those forgotten men, our hat designers. <laughs> These geniuses of the headgear were once happy, carefree, normal men, even as you and I. They've sacrificed their lives for the things and stuff the fair sex put on top of their heads. They've given everything, their homes, their families, their futures, their lives. For what? For this, a woman's hat. 